Okay, uh, thank the organizers. And I'll be talking on, um, so uh, for the entire work, the, what the basic principle that is being followed is the competition between electrostatic energy and uh, free ion entropy, which I uh, discussed before also in some other talks, uh, in some of which you were, some of you were present. So uh, it is basically uh, whether the counter ion will condense on a charged monomer or it will be free. If it's free, it will enjoy the entropy. If it is condensed, it will enjoy the electrostatic energy with a negative sign. But this dielectric constant, depending on the polarity of the solvent, plays a major role in uh, determining the equilibrium fraction of counter ions. Now you can have salt and with more salt, you will have more condensation. Uh, now within a polymer, if you think about a single chain, there are two major interactions between monomers. One is the hydrophobic, you th think of in a poor solvent. The hydrophobic interaction will try to confine the polymer. The electrostatic interaction will try to expand the polymer. Now, um, uh, one can imagine that in a confined polymer, uh, all the counter ions will be collapsed. Otherwise, there will be huge uh, electrostatic energy cost. Got some more time. Okay. So, uh, mm, so it is a self-consistent consistent, uh, cooperative effect between the size and the charge. So, to get the equilibrium, one has to ideally minimize the, double minimize the free energy to get the, both the charge and the size. Now, first I look into the swelling of polymer gels, uh, was done by Sati, she's in the audience. She has a poster also. Now, from the single chain, we can have many chains to form a solution. They can be cross-linked to find a gel. The gel will also have similar properties like a single chain. In good solvent, it will expand. Poor solvent, it will collapse. And if you have charges, in a gel or in a solution, it is possible to see this coexistence, or at least theoretically. So this is one thing, this is an equilibrium feature. And regarding the swelling of the gel, one can think of the role of like charge repulsion and the free ion entropy. Free ion entropy in the sense the gel must remain electroneutral during the entire process. And uh, the free counter ions will like to enjoy more and more volume. And for that reason also the gel can swell in addition to the like charge repulsion of these monomers. So the question arises that what are uh, the more important effects here? So in the first work, what we did, we could uh, actually reproduce this schematic diagram where for a, it's a very well known diagram for, the, for a polymer gel where you have um, this uh, uh, volume curve, this is a volume transition curve, this is a coexistence curve. So this within this region, the gel will take this shape. So we have, we have reproduced through our theory that this is, you can really find a dome and uh, this is for uh, alpha is the charge content of the gel, like fraction of free counter ions. So alpha is equal to zero is a neutral polymer, neutral gel, and this is a slightly charged gel. You can see 1% charge only. And one can see these domes. Now, immediately, this is, this is still unpublished, this part. Uh, one can look into the equilibrium properties this, uh, uh, this dome in general for, uh, for variable charge. And for a variable charge, not only the densities will phase separate, also the charge will phase separate. Two phases will have different charges. You can look into some other properties. I'm not going into details of them. The only thing you can look at phi, the density versus charge in the system. And you can see for different temperatures, these, uh, uh, this density versus charge, these curves, curves they will collapse on each other. For the jump, you could see the jump here. This jump actually detail, depends on the cross-link density and it vanishes for sufficiently low cross-link density. One can look into the criticality of this region. So these are the some things which uh, we plan to do later. What we have done here previously, it is actually looking at the kinetics of, of such gels. So what you do starts from a non-equilibrium shrunken gel, high density, let it swell to its swollen equilibrium, which, is, which has a low density. It swells non-uniformly, of course, because the water penetrates from outside. So the outside region will swell earlier and reach the equilibrium density. And we look at the spatial and temporal profiles of density charge and osmotic pressure. Uh, of course, the charge density, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, the uh, mass density, charge density, and the osmotic pressure of the system as functions of charge content, which is alpha, hydrophobicity, the chemical mismatch, and the cross-link density. Now, 
this is uh, what I discussed before in some other places as well. So there are two methods. One is a diffusion kind of a method where you follow the basic Lagrangian in a, in a definitions of elasticity and there's a bulk modulus to the system. In the other method, you take a free energy. From the free energy, you get an osmotic pressure. And from these two, comparing the profiles of th these two, you can find a bulk modulus of a system for small deformation from the osmotic expression of osmotic pressure of the gel, which is function of polymer density, charge density, uh, dielectric constant, chemical mismatch, and the crosslink density. So I'll skip. These are the free energies. And this is the result we had gotten for a spherical gel. We could see that, so these are the profiles. This is the size versus time. The gel swells. Th this is that. This is a parameter, which is the displacement vector. And this is the osmotic pressure Pressure one can see. Osmotic pressure starting from a uniform value will finally come down to zero when the gel is fully swollen. The bulk modulus for small deformation, you can only for small deformation, the concept of bulk modulus is valid. That goes down with charge, slightly counterintuitive result, goes down with charge. Uh, for fixed charge system, for variable charge system, we see the non-monotonicity, which still we do not understand quite well. Now, uh, we can find an analytical expression for the bulk modulus as well from the osmotic pressure uh, by expanding the osmotic pressure and finding the coefficient of this particular, this strain, is the strain uh, in uh, spherical coordinate, and this, whatever comes here is this, and the analytical expression also matches with the uh, that that is valid for infinitesimally small deformation, of course. That's the definition of bulk modulus. Now we matched with some experimental results from uh, Priyadoshi's lab. Priyadoshi, uh, uh, he's there in, uh, sorry, in our institute. So um, we matched some results, some previously old results from Suarez's lab, and they match quite well at the, the, the size. But the internal variables, the inhomogeneity is very difficult to find in experiment. Once it is found, we can match our theory. Uh, and then, that was only charge. Now we move on to chemical mismatch, which is chi parameter, known in the chemist community, and the uh, cross-link density, the elasticity as well. You can see the sizes change with these parameters. I'll skip this one, but just directly go to the relaxation time. Relaxation time is you deform it, how long it takes to equilibrate and come to the Solen value. So it, uh, uh, for, for fixed de degree of deformation, around 10% deformation, the relaxation time increases with uh, charge. Again, it's counterintuitive. Because you know, when you deform, there are two things. How far the gel has to go to equilibrate, and what is the driving force? There are two things. For the charge, what happens? The driving force is higher, with higher charge, but it has to go farther distance. That is why it takes more time. This is what we have found. Now the whole scenario will change if you start from the same size, same density, different amount of charge. In that case, the time will come down. So uh, uh, those are the other results which we're not presenting here. Time, relaxation time increases with chemical mismatch, because chemical mismatch favors separation. Uh, and it opposes swelling. So diffusion constant goes down, actually. You can see these these are connected. So time is more mean diffusion constant is lower. And this final one is the cross-link density, which offers elasticity to the system. So the cross-link density going higher means it is more elastic. If you deform, it will come back faster. So that's what is happening here. Then um, again, that one we have discussed before. This is the different scale, same stuff. Uh, another matching with an experiment, a different kind of gels where you could actually control the uh, charge of the system. And uh, this is a very special result. This is a final charge minus initial charge. This is an equilibrium result, actually. Uh, we discovered this, this while working with the kinetics. So final charge minus um, initial charge, that actually follows a Gaussian pattern, which prompted us, uh, this is as a function of the dielectric constant which controls the charge. So which prompted us to look into the free energy more carefully and we could find a, you know, it's a not so good looking expression, analytical expression for charge. And one can see the uh, presence of this Coulomb strength, this delta times L beta is the barium length, 
and delta is uh, related to the dielectric constant, uh, as I told you. So this is uh, abandoned everywhere. Like this result was got, obtained log. This is for the gel. This is for the single chain. You can see some similarities. This needs more work on it. And then what we looked into, how much time? Over? Just over? OK. So so what, what we wanted to do, see, previously we, are, we were looking into this region above the critical point. Above means in temperature. Lower in Ki, it's this side is this side is temperature. Now then we thought about looking very close to the critical point. Because you expect some critical slowing down, because you know this is close to the critical point. Uh, with phi, the pi doesn't change much. So the driving force, which comes from the difference in density, will also go down. Close to the criti critical point, that's what we see. Uh, we get slightly different types of curves. This is the critical density of phi, you can see. Uh, it is not as smooth as the previous one. Again, it requires little more analysis. But um, then, yeah, and we looked in, into deswiling as well for the first time. Uh, the principle is the same, and very nicely, both theories they can be directly applied to deswiling. You start from a solen gel, and the equilibrium is actually the shrunken gel, and allow it to deswell. Uh, I believe I'll stop. I had a little bit more, just one minute, because we. But getting these results, we are a little bit excited and thought of applying it to a single chain. Same procedure, same osmotic pressure on the shale of the gel. Here, there is no inhomogeneity. You just consider an encapsulating uh, spherical surface. And here also, it is possible to find some analytical results of swelling, deswelling, and collapse. Collapse below this Gaussian size. Uh, I believe, yeah, I'll, I'll just stop. Thank you. Are there questions? So let us once again thank the speaker. Thank you.